Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ovid, and in today's video, I want to talk about AOVs, also known as render passes. I will also talk about light groups, which are just enabled for AL shaders. And in general, I like to use the AL shaders for all my renders. And if you haven't done so, please um, check out M2A 102 to see what AL shaders are and how they work. And have a look at 112 to see how you actually can install them. So jumping right in, this is my lighting setup for this shot. I've got a green and a red um, Cornell box to get some bounce light on the characters. And I've got some specular highlights. Uh, my scene looks like this. I've got two area lights at the top here and here, which creates um, the lighting environment. And this is the basic setup. So it's nothing, nothing special, nothing fancy. Basic metal shader with uh, diffuse, so um, or it's a rather plastic shader, so we get some diffuse contribution. And I, I've added uh, two spec lobes just uh, for the tutorial. So first thing, how do you create AOVs? So it's quite easy. You go to the render globals, and all you got to do is uh, go to uh, AOVs, to the AOVs tab. And then you click um, AL Surface, or you can use the AI um, standard AOVs, which represent similar ones. And if they are in both um, shaders, they will um, be mixed together, which, so which is what you want. So if you've got a shader AI standard and AL Surface, you get the same AOV output. So what do we want to create? So we definitely want the direct diffuse, the direct spec, and the direct spec 2. If you've got like um, um, back, like backlit shaders, you would need to direct backlight. And then we also want to have um, indirect diffuse, indirect spec 1 and 2. If you've got refraction, like a glass object, you would need to enable refraction. If you've got SSS or single scatter, you wouldn't need to enable both of these. So all you got to do then is move them over with the arrow so they get created. And we also want to create light groups. Light groups are um, renders from um, with just that, that one light source. It's cool if you want to animate lights after the render is done or something like that. You can do that quite easily using this approach. So I will also add light group 1 and light group 2. And these are all the AOVs I need. So let's see what we got actually. So this is a direct diffuse. Then we've got direct spec, direct spec 2, indirect, which is noisy, obviously. Indirect spec, also noisy. Indirect, all the indirects are always noisy. And the light groups 1 and 2 are empty, and we need to fix that. And to do so, all you got to do is add a specific M2A um, ID constant to your um, shape nodes. So be sure to select the shape node. Even an attribute editor is now selected, like so. You still need to click select here, so it's actually properly selected. Or what you can do is go to display, enable shapes, then you get a plus icon next to your transform. You can open that, and then you can actually select the shape directly. And you, all you got to do is add attribute, um, and you got to, oops, not paste it. That, that did not work. It is called M2A underscore constant. It's actually called light group. So let's just write it here, light group. And this is um, what you need to add to all of your lights, which should be in one group. And it's an integer, and you've got eight um, AUVs for that. So I want the left light to be in uh, group one, and the right light should go into um, M2A constant light group into light two. So let's just double check if they are added. So the right light is on two and the other one is on one. That's what we want. And let's start the IPR. So this is now light group two, the right light, and light group one, the left light. So this is now set up properly. And all we got to do now is render. And then I will be back in Nuke to show you how you add them together so you get the actual beauty result again. Okay, before we go into Nuke, I first actually want to show you how I export it. Um, because this is a, 
um, education license, I got to um, do save multi-layer EXR in the Arnold render view, file save multi-layer EXR, then I navigate to um, the project directory, nuke, and I just overwrite this, yes. And this is how you export the EXR as a multi-channel file. Um, ideally, what you would want to do is um, render this using batch and then make sure to not combine the AOVs so um, you get a, a file per AOV actually and not one EXR file but you get like seven or, or, or eight AOVs for your scene. So I'm saving this just to be safe and then I'm heading over to Nuke and I will hit read uh, R for read node and loading in the training image. So this is now the rendered image we got from um, Arnold. Um, let's just see. So this it is so noisy. It didn't go for like super clean, but it's good enough to to for you to see what is actually going on. And there's some preparation work which needs to be done. So ideally, if you want to grade, for instance, a spec two amount, you can either just um, shuffle it out. So going here, and then you would go to uh, direct spec two, which is this guy, and then you can actually um, you first would need to subtract this, I guess. So you would say a minus b. This is now doubled on top. Should actually be doubled. Let's just confirm. This is here. This is here. Uh, it needs to be on plus then. There we go. Plus is the correct one. So now it's actually doubling up the spec. As you can see, default and doubling up. But we want to subtract this. So we would say A minus B. So this is now without the spec, the spec 2. And now if you want to um, add it back on top, it seems to be complicated, but this is actually a good way to do this. So you would say A plus spec 2 again uh, plus and this should resemble the final result, uh, the, the beauty result. So this and this compared, one and two, it's exactly the same. So what you can do now is actually just grade this here. If you want to just reduce the amount a bit, you can actually just um, do something like this, increase or whatever, change the color. Let's say it, the, the base is like something red or something. So this is how you would quickly um, do some color corrections on just the specular two pass, which is like this, and then it gets added on top. And this is how it would look like. Um, the other way, which involves a bit more work, but will save you in the end some time, is if you would actually create lots of um, shuffle nodes. Um, so we would start at the top. And st the top one is direct diffuse, copy, paste. And then you would select the next one, direct spec. And you can skip over this part. I'm just quickly doing this for all the AOVs. Uh, this guy, paste, this is now the indirect diffuse, indirect spec, indirect spec, indirect spec 2. I think this is the last one, yes. So what you're going to do then is you select them all and press M for merge and then make sure you use a plus operation and compare the result with your beauty render. So 1 and 2 and they are identical. So what you can do now is you can just add grade nodes in here. Like this is like uh, a poor man's comp, I guess, and proper compass would laugh at me. But for slab comps or whatever, this is actually just fine. So um, now I just, I don't know what this is, direct diffuse. I just graded down the direct diffuse for this comp. See what's happening here? And what do we have here? Direct spec and direct spec 2. So let's just um, reduce the spec so it is just a Lambert shader. So this is now actually disabling specular highlights. And you would need to in, um, disable the indirect 2 because otherwise it wouldn't, it would look weird. So this one off and this one off. And this is now a pure Lambert shader. And this is how easy you can um, adjust your render after um, the long render times. So I'm bringing them back in. If you control click, 
control middle click you can reset the values that's the one thing so the other thing is let's just uh, you wondering where's the where are the light ids so let's just copy those two guys connect them to this one as well and select light group one light group two one and two and you can also um, pressing M plusing them together and we should see the same results so yeah one and two this is the same so this is now what you can do you can either copy all the shuffle nodes into this data stream so you can after that um, adjust them again or if you don't want to or whatever if you want to animate the lights you can just um, gain them again or like reduce a gain or whatever and then you can animate them change the color so let's say this light is now a I don't know yellow light a warmer light this is what you would get so you can actually change the lighting not the light direction because we didn't run out normal passes and our, we are not doing relighting in nuke but you can actually adjust the overall light and feel of your render so you see what you can do with just these simple techniques you can really um, improve your render and also if you can uh, with these these techniques you can actually change the, the whole uh, surface you can now like just a simple thing it's nothing too fancy but if you um, add a noise like so uh, let's just see if I can get this to work I didn't test this before so it might even not work so this is the spec one I guess spec two never mind um, spec one spec two okay and what I want to do now I just want to multiply two values together so I put this on multiply this plus this uh, we need to reformat here this needs to be 2k I, I presume is this 2k as well 1k so this needs to be 1k okay so now you can actually see what is happening here um, with the multiply on top of this we actually get some like some breakup on the of the surface like this is the default um, oh damn it's offsetting it's still not properly do I need to distort this guy I'm always confused I think this needs to be just connected to this and then we get the proper one um, just at a constant or something I don't know constant of 1k like so what happens now okay so now we get we can remove this guy so now it's actually matching properly on top of this guy and if you adjust the size or um, what can we do gain make it more contrasty we can uh, transform this if you want but this is now a broken up spec 2 pass obviously if you would if your object would be rotating you would need to use pref or something um, to get this to work properly um, it seems that I still get the damn offset or is it okay or it might actually be okay but you can see what's happening you know you get some actually some nice breakup on on the surface and if you, if you don't want to have this strong multiply uh, the strong noise effect you just would need to adjust um, the gain and you would actually see a really nice result if you want to go for this this looks more like a kind of flaky surface and this was just a simple example uh, what you can do with those AOVs um, but the important thing is you need to either when you do a multi-channel EXR extract all the uh, um, the AOVs using shuffle nodes or you render them directly um, separate and then you just need to do um, import them and merge them together and then add gains or whatever whatever um, color correction you want to do after that and this is all the magic there is to basic AOV setup in Nuke and I hope you did learn something and I hope you did enjoy this uh, quick tutorial about AOVs um, if you did like the um, video please give me a thumbs up if you have anything to say to this if you've got better ideas or better um, workflows please share them in the comment section below and as always happy rendering